Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to this week's On the Road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting October 22nd, 2012. This week I'm at Gartner's IT Expo, so I'm going to make this episode quick. Today we're going to cover some hardware hacks, uh, a story about many Fortune 500 companies being breached, and finally an interesting hack on a popular gaming system. I'll start with the Fortune 500 breaches. Early in the week, a popular security journalist, Brian Krebs, broke a story about many Fortune 500 servers and other servers as well being breached by a ring of Russian attackers who were selling off access to their RDP, or remote desktop, services. Essentially, he found a site called Dedicated Express. Now, it seems this group of hackers actually finds open RDP servers on the internet, probably just doing scans for the RDP port. Then, because of weak passwords, this was no flaw in RDP, it's just uh, managers of these servers didn't use very good passwords, these attackers were able to gain access to these RDP servers, including some servers that are in Fortune 500 companies. Once they had access to these servers, they sold off time on these servers to other people that might want to use these servers in their attacks. According to Brian Krebs, right now this site is offering services of about 17,000 uh, hacked RDP servers, and he said they've had about 600,000 servers in the past. So if you run an RDP server and you give public access to it, absolutely make sure you use strong passwords and follow all the password safety practices. I quickly also want to talk about a story where the Dutch government seems to be wanting to give more access to law enforcement to perhaps breach people's privacy. According to a Computer World article, uh, they found a letter from the Dutch government that seems to be suggesting that they want to give law enforcement the capability of actually hacking computers of suspects in crimes. So if they, they, they find evidence that uh, maybe someone's stealing intellectual property or is part of a pedophile ring, they want to have the ability to put malware or, or a backdoor on that computer to start monitoring and stealing access. Uh, while I definitely think we need more laws to prosecute cyber criminals, I'm not quite sure about the idea of law enforcement legally hacking our computer. It seems like uh, unlawful uh, entry and evidence collection. What's more interesting about this law is often the computers that these law enforcement agents find are in different countries. And this letter seems to suggest that these law enforcement agencies may even be able to put uh, Trojan access on those computers as well, which may have international ramifications. In any case, this isn't a law yet, but it's an interesting story from the other side of the world, and I'll probably keep an eye on it. Next up is what potentially is a hardware hacking incident. Earlier in the week, a press release came out from Barnes & Noble where they announced they found that 63 of their payment entry pads had been hacked. Basically, the attacker seems to have been able to steal the data of any victims that swiped their cards and, and made payments at 63 different Barnes & Noble locations. Now, there's no clear details on how this particular hack happened. If I follow past security research, it could be a number of ways. For instance, card skimmers are very popular on ATM machines. This is where you put a very thin device over the normal card reader that allows an attacker to skim the details when you're actually passing it through an ATM. Another possibility is uh, attackers have found ways to put malicious code on cards so that when they scan it, they can actually leverage a vulnerability in the actual ATM or pin pad machine itself. That's a much more technical hack. You actually have to know a lot about the, the specific ATM or machine you're hacking, and you have to know there's some sort of vulnerability in it that you could leverage with uh, malicious data that's on the, the card reader of a card. In either case, we don't know how this happened. It could also, by the way, have been an insider 
that planted this kind of thing. But it is a very interesting uh, story. So if you use Barnes & Noble, you might want to be careful. And more importantly, as you're using card readers or, or ATMs, be sure to check out the, the skimmer and keypad before you actually swipe your card. Sometimes you can tell when someone's put a, a skimmer on top of a real key card. So be careful out there. The final story is also an interesting hardware hack and, and a story for my fellow gamers out there. This week, the LVO key, or the, the main cryptographic key of a PlayStation 3 system, was leaked online by a Chinese hacking group. Uh, without going into a ton of detail, PlayStation 3 gaming consoles ha actually have very, very good security. Built right into the hardware is a very specific private key uh, that the PlayStation uses for everything, really. There's a number of keys on the PlayStation. Some are specific to your console, but there's one that's very private private to Sony and the console itself. Uh, it's the key that's used to protect software running on the PlayStation to make sure you can only run Sony sanctioned software and that you can't pirate stuff, which by the way is a good thing. You shouldn't pirate games and stuff like that. Anyways, this week a Chinese research group somehow discovered this key and leaked it to the public. Uh, what's the problem with this? Well, first of all, it will help people pirate stuff for the PlayStation. Now, some people argue there's also homebrew, the capability of running your own code on the PlayStation, including Linux and stuff like that. That is kind of neat, but piracy on the PlayStation is bad. On the flip side, this key also means that right now, hacked PlayStations have access to the PlayStation or PSN network. Normally, if, if you hack your PlayStation, you get barred from the PlayStation network. But because they have the, the, the real key, the LVO key of the PlayStation, they're currently able to log on to the PlayStation network. Now I'm sure Sony's going to change this very, very quickly, but back a year or two years ago when we had the big PlayStation network hack, it actually happened at a time where another hacker had just released keys that allowed PlayStation consoles to go on the network. So while no one's really said exactly how the PlayStation network hack happened, it could be associated with custom firmwares. So it would be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, if you're a PlayStation owner, hopefully you're, you're legitimate and you're not worried about this hacking stuff. It doesn't mean that, that your PlayStation can be compromised or anything, but it is just an interesting general security story to see how these bad guys are breaching hardware security as well. So I'll keep an eye on that as well. And there you have it. That covers another week in security news. Thanks for watching this really quick on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review. And if you'd like more regular news, be sure to follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog. And you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. And you can also follow at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.